Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our fourth lesson on the ninth topic of Form 4 which is called Photoelectric Effect. As usual, let me commence by giving you the quote of the day which states that the greatest roadblock to your dream is your indecision to act. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the factors affecting photoelectric effect whereby we are saying that the kinetic energy, hence the velocity, of the emitted electrons depends on the following four factors. So remember we are talking of kinetic energy hence the velocity of the emitted electrons because we know that kinetic energy is equal to half mE v squared. So if you keep mass of the electron constant then kinetic energy will always be directly proportional to the velocity of the emitted electrons. So our first factor is what we call the frequency f of the incident radiation. So the higher the frequency of the incident radiation, the more the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. But because we know that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to the velocity of the emitted electrons, it simply means that we can also say that the higher the frequency of the incident radiation, the higher the velocity of the emitted electrons. Then remember that no photoelectric emission occurs below the threshold frequency. Now, from the Einstein's photoelectric equation, we said that the energy of the incident radiation must be equal to the sum of work function and the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. Now remember that work function is usually constant uh, whenever you are using uh, a certain type of metal plate, such that each metal plate um, has its own specific value of the work function. So if we keep work function constant, that is simply to mean that we are using a specific type of metal plate, then if uh, the, the energy of the uh, incident radiation will be varying directly proportionally to the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons, such that the higher the energy of the incident radiation, the higher the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. The lower the energy of the incident radiation, the lower the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. But because kinetic energy is also directly proportional to the square of the velocity of the emitted electrons, it also simply means that the higher the energy of the incident radiation, the higher the velocity of the emitted electrons, and the lower uh, the energy of the incident radiation, the lower the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. So from this particular uh, formula, you can see that uh, the energy of the incident radiation is directly proportional to the kinetic energy hence also directly proportional to the velocity of the emitted electrons. Now remember that the kinetic e that is the energy of the incident radiation is also directly proportional to the frequency of the incident radiation because we know that the higher the frequency of the incident radiation the higher the energy of the uh, incident uh, radiation. So because frequency is directly proportional to the energy that is the frequency of the incident radiation is directly proportional to the energy of the incident radiation and the energy of the incident radiation is directly proportional to kinetic energy of the uh, emitted electrons also directly proportional to the velocity of the emitted electrons it simply means that the higher the frequency of the incident radiation the higher uh, the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons hence the higher the velocity of the emitted electrons then the second factor is what we call the intensity or the brightness of the incident radiation. So the number of ejected electrons is directly proportional to the intensity of the radiation used. So this one simply means that the higher the brightness or the higher the intensity of the incident radiation, the more or the higher the number of ejected electrons. Similarly, the lower the intensity or the lower the brightness of the incident radiation, the smaller or the lower the number of the ejected electrons. Then the third function is, that is the third uh, factor is what we call the work function W0 of the uh, metal plate used. So a metal with a higher or with a larger work function emits fewer electrons than the one with a lower work function. So the reason is because, remember from this equation, some of the energy, we need the work function. Uh, so the energy that will remain, uh, uh, after the work function has been taken away is what will go to the kinetic energy of the emitted electron. So we are saying that a metal with a larger work function uh, will emit fewer electrons because if a metal has a higher uh, work function then you will need a very large 
uh, frequency of the incident radiation in order for you to emit any electron from such a metal surface. But if a metal surface has a smaller value of the work function, then it is easier for any incident radiation to emit electrons from such a metal plate. Then the fourth and the last factor is what we call the potential difference between the anode and the cathode or uh, simply the applied voltage V. So you can see from this particular equation, of course, if uh, the potential difference, uh, uh, the potential difference between the anode and the cathode of uh, uh, that is this particular plates. The higher the potential difference, the higher the velocity with which the, the emitted electrons will be moving at because they are being accelerated. Uh, that is the higher potential difference is accelerating these particular electrons. So the higher, that is the potential difference between the anode and the cathode or simply the applied voltage. The higher the potential difference or the applied voltage, the higher the kinetic energy, hence the velocity of the emitted electrons. Yeah, it's just common sense. Huh? If the potential difference between plate A and plate B is very high, the emitted electrons will be accelerated at very high velocities or at very high kinetic energy as compared to when the potential difference is lower. Then... The above factors can be studied by use of a photocell, which usually consists of a photoemissive cathode and, of course, an, an anode enclosed in an evacuated uh, container. So this is what we are calling the photocell. So it has the anode, it has the cathode, then uh, the inner part of that particular photocell is a vacuum. That is why we are saying that it is evacuated. So the purpose of the vacuum is simply to prevent the electrons from losing any of their kinetic energy as they accelerate, of course, from the cathode towards the anode because of the higher potential difference between those two. Next, we look at how we can connect a photocell within an electrical circuit. So the first thing to note is that the cathode of the photocell must always be connected to the negative terminal of the source of power. Similarly, the anode of the photocell must always be connected to the positive terminal of the source of power. So we have a milliameter to detect any photocurrent that is flowing through the circuit. We have the voltimeter to detect any uh, photovoltage that is flowing through the circuit. Then, of course, we have a variable resistor to vary either current or voltage, of course, by changing the resistance, because you know that uh, from Ohm's law, V is equals to IR. So if you change the resistance, it will also affect the current and the uh, voltage flowing through the circuit. So the importance of the variable resistor is to vary both current and voltage so that we can ob obtain corresponding values of uh, ammeter reading and voltimeter reading so that we can use those values to plot a graph, maybe a graph of uh, a photocurrent against the uh, voltage so that we can analyze those particular results graphically. Then we have a switch S which is used to close or open the circuit. We have the source of power. So the photocell is connected in a circuit as shown in this particular diagram here. So when the switch is closed, the ultraviolet light allows uh, and ultraviolet light allowed to fall on the cathode, the milliameter shows a deflection. So the current that flows is called the photo current. So of course, if you close this particular switch, then we have ultraviolet radiation, which is coming to fall onto the cathode of the photocell. We expect some photoelectric emission to take place, uh, a courtesy of this equation, that the energy of ultraviolet radiation must be equal to the work function of the photocell plus the maximum kinetic energy with which the electrons will be moving at. So remember, immediately the ultraviolet radiation ejects electrons from the uh, cathode of this particular photocell. Those electrons are going to be accelerated uh, towards the anode because of the higher potential difference. Uh, and of course, they also possess kinetic energy uh, from the energy obtained from the energy of the incident radiation, of course, when we have subtracted the work function of this particular uh, photocell that we have uh, uh, connected, uh, uh, ultraviolet radiation irradiated it towards the uh, cathode of this particular photocell. So the electrons, the movement of the electron will be accelerated by the uh, anode, of course, which is attracting the electrons which are negatively charged. So because of that movement, this particular gap is going to be closed. 
Then also remember within this particular photo cell, uh, the, the photo cell is usually evacuated or there's a vacuum in between uh, to prevent the electrons maybe from losing some of their kinetic energy due to collision with invisible uh, air molecules that could be contained within this particular photo cell. So that's the reason why we evacuate the photo cell to prevent loss of energy from electrons as a result of colliding with air molecules. So those electrons are their movement. The stream of electron is going to complete this path. Uh, hence, the current will be flowing through this particular circuit. That is why our milliameter will be able to detect uh, a small uh, photo current flowing through. Then the voltmeter will also be able to detect some current or some voltage flowing through uh, this particular circuit. Uh, of course, courtesy of the Einstein's photoelectric equation. Now, if the frequency of the incident radiation increases, the photo current also increases because remember if we increase the frequency of the incident radiation in this case which is the ultraviolet radiation then it simply means that the energy of the uh, photo electron that is the energy of the incident radiation will also be very high so if the energy is high it is able to uh, dislodge or to eject more electrons from this particular a uh, cathode of the photo cell the more the electrons emitted the more the electrons are attracted on the cathode, the higher the current. Because remember, current is simply the rate of flow of charges. Then the charge in this case are the electrons. So the more the electrons ejected, the more the electrons that will be attracted to the anode, hence the more the current flowing through the circuit. That is why the higher the frequency, the higher the energy of the incident radiation, the higher the photo current. Similarly, if the um, voltage between the anode and the cathode is increased, then we also expect the photo current uh, to also increase. Because remember, if you increase the voltage between the anode and the cathode, uh, remember this one, the anode is connected to the positive terminal, then the, cath the cathode is connected to the negative terminal. So if you increase the number of cells, or if you increase, if you make the battery to be more powerful, it simply means that the potential difference between the anode and the cathode will be very high. Hence, the electrons will be attracted at very high kinetic energy because they are being accelerated by this particular uh, potential difference between the anode and the cathode. So the higher potential difference will ensure that even more electrons are getting uh, accelerated towards the anode at a very high speed. The more the electrons being accelerated at a very high speed, the higher the photocurrent that will be recorded by our milliameter. Then the minimum voltage V0 at which no electrons are able to be reached uh, are able to reach the anode is called the stopping voltage. Uh? So this is what we are calling the stopping voltage V0. So remember, if that is the minimum voltage at which no electrons are able to reach the anode, uh, if the voltage is too small uh, of this particular uh, uh, source of power such that the anode is, able, is not able to attract any electron from the cathode towards this particular anode, then that voltage is what we are calling the stopping voltage because no electron is reaching this particular cathode this particular anode therefore our milliameter will not record any current that is why you are seeing this particular graph at v naught at the, at the stopping voltage the corresponding value of current will be zero as uh, shown in this particular graph so the minimum voltage v naught at which no electrons are able to reach the anode is called the stopping voltage so this stopping voltage is simply a measure of the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Huh? So at the stopping voltage, maximum kinetic energy is equal to EV, which is equal to a half Me V squared max. So you can see we have the two graphs here uh, uh, indicating various values of the uh, photocurrent for different material. For this particular case, you can see that the energy of the first material, E1, will always be greater than the energy of the second uh, material, which is E2. So these materials could be different, maybe materials of making up the, uh, that is the energy, either the energy of the incident radiation or the, uh, yeah, the energy of the incident radiation. So if you use a material of higher energy, incident radiation, then the photocurrent recorded will be very high as seen by the peak of this particular uh, photocurrent. So you can be told, maybe you are given one of the graphs, huh? then you are told to sketch the photocurrent against voltage graph for uh, an energy or an incident radiation which has a lower energy than uh, maybe E1. Huh? So that graph will be at a lower place because the lower the energy of the incident radiation, the lower the photocurrent, the higher the energy of the incident radiation, the more the photocurrent recorded. Lastly, 
we look at the intensity over radiation whereby you are saying that the intensity over radiation is the rate of energy flow per unit area when the radiation is normal to the area or simply put when the radiation is perpendicular to the area so the intensity is equals to work divided by uh, the area multiplied by time now i can separate these quantities by taking the reciprocal of area multiplied by work over time so the reason for separating is so that i know that work over time will give me the power from a certain chapter in form 3 which was called work energy power in machines you can simply review we simply defined power as the rate of doing work therefore work done divided by time will simply give you power so work over time will give me power so that will be the reciprocal of area multiplied by power then one multiplied by power you'll get power then divided by area therefore intensity is equals to power divided by the area in terms of simples intensity i is equals to power p divided by the area a therefore uh, we can also look at another relationship whereby you are saying that the intensity of a given radiation is inversely proportional to the square of the distance r from the source so intensity i is uh, inversely proportional to the square of the distance r from the source so this one simply means that this is what we are calling the distance r the distance from the source to the cathode of the photocell where uh, electrons are being emitted so this one simply means that the shorter the distance r of the source from the photocell the more the intensity of the radiation then uh, the longer the distance r uh, of the source from the photocell uh, the smaller the intensity of that particular given radiation so uh, we have the color filter here which will help us to extract the specific color that we want from this particular white light so also the photocurrent i is directly proportional to the number of photoelectrons emitted per second thus the number of photoelectrons produced is directly proportional to the intensity because we can we can see that the intensity that is the intensity that is the photocurrent i is directly proportional to the number of photoelectrons emitted and remember the more the number of photoelectrons emitted per unit time the more the current that is why we are saying that the number of photoelectrons produced will always be directly proportional to the intensity because the more the intensity the more the photoelectrons that will be emitted the more the current that will flow through this particular circuit hence the larger the deflection on the galvanometer pointer as shown in this particular diagram this is extra heat tension huh? that is this one is simply keeping our plate a and plate b at very high potential differences so that any electrons emitted of course will be uh, transmitted uh, causing a deflection in the galvanometer uh, indicating that some current is flowing so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that the greatest roadblock to your dream is your indecision to act that is your lack of decision to act so the quote is reminding us that we are products of the decisions we made in our yester year so be very careful with the decisions you make today because they they gonna impact your future life most of us have great plans great strategies and sufficient resources to pursue and achieve our dreams but we are afraid to act because of what other people will say or simply because of what could go wrong remember that five years from now you will regret more about the things you never tried than the things you tried and failed because when you fail you learn but when you never try you never learn anything new and lastly recall that anything good that you are yearning for is on the other side of fear you just have to cross the bridge of fear thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson i do not take it for granted in case you are new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the, the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notified until next time this is kind tuition academy thank you very much